Cloudflare workflows just became generally available. This means you can go try it out right now. Doubtful? Now I know what you're thinking. Yes, it's available on a free plan. Nope, no credit card is required. And yes, it's totally awesome. My name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at Cloudflare. If you have no idea what workflows are, allow me to bring you up to speed. Workflows is a durable execution engine built on Cloudflare workers. Workflows enables you to build multi-step applications that can automatically retry, persist state, and run for minutes, hours, days, or weeks. And Workflow makes it trivial to build reliable, long-running tasks that you can observe as they progress and programmatically control. There are lots of really cool use cases for workflows, one of which is handling background jobs. So to give you an example of this, imagine you have a request coming in from a user and you need to do some sort of processing and then respond to that request. It would probably be best to handle that processing off the request and not within the request loop. And workflow is a great um, use case for this. So to show you an, a specific example, I have this application built, which you can see on the screen right now. It's an image transformer tool. And what this means is that you can go select an image and then specify what transformations you want to perform to the image. And that image gets uploaded with the transformations applied and then you can go on to download the image. So let's uh, go through this application quickly and then I'll show you how it is built and how workflow makes the image processing bit really easy to implement. All right, so let's go select an image. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to select the orange cat image. This looks nice. Um, I want to perform some transformations on this. So let's say I need to resize this for a blog post, for example. So let's say I have that set to uh, 519 pixels by 519 pixels. For filters, I'm just going to apply hue. And that was a JPG image. I'm just going to convert this to a PNG image. So we have uh, PNG selected here. So let's go on with the transformation. I'm going to hit the transform button. And this is going to get the image uploaded to my workers backend and kick off a workflow that performs all of each transformation I have selected um, as a separate step. I'll show you what that is in a moment. But right here, you can see the image we have. Uh, this has been transformed to a green image with a PNG uh, file format and with the resize options we have. And I can go download that and we have that downloaded over here, so which is really nice. Um, if you'd like to see how this works, the source code for this application is over here on GitHub. So you can go take a look at this, leave a star if you find this helpful. But let's step over to the code so I can show you how this works in practice. So stepping over to my IDE, um, I have the backend as a Cloudflare worker written in Hono, and you can see that we have a bunch of routes, but the most interesting one here is the upload route, which allows us to upload a file to the backend. So first we receive a bunch of query params, uh, which can come from a request that has the file uploaded and the transformations we want to perform added as query params. So we can specify the resize width, the resize height, uh, the file format, and the filter options we need. That gets received by the query params option here. And we do some validations with Zod, which uh, helps us to ensure that we're getting the data we expect. And after that, we actually pull the file from the request. We generate an ID for the file and we upload that file to R2. If you don't know what R2 is, R2 is an object storage provided as a part of Cloudflare Workers, and it's really easy to get added to your workflow. So let's uh, open up the Wrangler.toml, and this is how easy it is to add an R2 capability to your Workers application or your workflow, and it's a simple binding. You don't need to set up authentication. It's really awesome. So I'm going to close this up and let's go on with the application. After we've gotten that file and added it to R2, what we're doing here is we're creating a workflow 
and we're passing in those transformation parameters to the workflow as you can see and lastly we're returning um, a response back to the request saying hey we have the workflow created here's the workflow id then you can go on later to check for the status of this workflow which is the code we have um, above here we have this route that enables you to check for the status of a workflow job and when the transformation is complete you can actually view the transformed image which is awesome so that's in a nutshell what we have right here in this file now let's look at what a workflow actually is we have a transformer workflow c dot env dot transformer what actually is in that file so let's take a look at that i'm going to open my transformer.ts file and this is what a workflow is essentially it's a class that has a bunch of steps so i have the workflow class the workflow class has a run method and here i pull out all of the options that were fed into this workflow to create the workflow in the first place and for each step this is what a workflow actually is so a workflow is a step that has a name and a callback that you can do some tasking or a job in so in this case i want to do the resize task that's what i'm doing here and for the resize task if the user actually selected hey i want this image to be resized i'm going to run this workflow step and what this step does is it fetches the file from r2 performs the transformation it needs to do on the file and puts the file back into R2. And the same goes for the filter step. So for the filter step, I'm creating a workflow step, giving it a name called filter image, and then I'm doing virtually the same thing. So fetch the file again from storage, um, perform the transformation on the file, and read the uh, write the file back into storage same also goes for the format step and that is in a nutshell what the workflow for this application is i have an alternate um implementation of this which only reads the file once and writes the file at the end of performing all of the transformations the user may have selected so this is an alternate implementation i read the file once from storage and then for each option selected by the user, I perform the step which just does the transformation on the file and it's writing it to the global state, uh, which is the same for all of the three transformations we have here. And lastly, it writes the file back into storage, which is nice, uh, but there is a bit of drawback here when using global state. So depending on your particular use case, you might want to use global state or you might want to actually just write to storage. Um, I'm going to leave a link to our notes in the documentation to help you figure out when to use what all right so heading back here really that's our workflow and um, we can go kick it off to to take a look at how this works so heading back here um, I can again we can make this even smaller we can turn this to a grayscale image and we can say hey I want this to be a JPEG now and we can hit the transform button and that's going to run each step we have specified in the workflow as the image is being processed and when that's done we should have the image generated here again this is not happening in the request loop we don't have all of these transformations being applied in the request loop which is really awesome so we we, we kick off the background job the transformations happen after the request is complete and the front end can fetch the status of the transformation and then view the file after it's done and you can see we have a really cute cut and um, the best part of this is that i can go into my dash for instance and see this transformation job that has happened so if i go to workers and pages i go to workflows I click on the workflow for the transformer we, we have created. Um, so you can see we just have this job, which is the last one that completed in like a few seconds ago. I can go open this up and you can see all of the steps that this workflow had to run. So it had to run the resize step, how to run the filter step, how to run the format step, and all of this was completed successfully, which means it works as expected. And we can go to my R2 object storage and uh, this is the bucket for my uh, image transformer application and these are the images we've transformed we can see all of that it works quite well and to also mention uh, the best part of this is that you can customize how long you want your workflow to run and Im importantly how much cpu time you want to set as a limit for your workflow so heading back to the code here i'm just going to open my wrangler.json file so a workflow used to be limited to a max of 30 
seconds for cpu time but now this limit has gone up to five minutes so you can specify up to 300 seconds or 3000 milliseconds and that's going to enable your workflow to spend five minutes on cpu time which means you can do really intensive background stuff on your workflow and it just opens up more capability for the kinds of applications you can build using workflows Awesome, that's workflows in a nutshell. I can't wait to see what you build. If you love to learn how to set up scheduling and sleep for your workflows, check out the video here. If you'd like to learn more about building conditional workflows, go check out the video here as well. And uh, that's it for me today. Happy coding. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.